Hey, what's going on? Tony from LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com. Welcome to the show tonight. Hopefully, you guys can hear me. So let's do a quick test out here. Quick test. If you can hear me, type in the chat, everybody, that you can hear me. Um, it's the only way that I know that everything's working because I don't want to get started and people can't hear me. <clears throat> Make sure you can hear me and see me. So type in the chat really quickly, guys. And the other way to let me know is to quickly give me a thumbs up. This way I can see the thumbs, the likes going up. So I know it's working. Everything's working. What's up, Tony? I can hear you great. VIP Sydney Sammy. Tim from West Virginia. All clear. Eric. All good. Yes, Tony. I can hear you and see you. What's good, everybody? Awesome. All right. So. <laughs> Eric, so everybody on here, type in quickly if you haven't yet where you're from, how many times you've been on the live call, and if you're a first-timer being on, say first-timer. We got a lot of people in here. Paul, VIP member from Indiana, all good. Got Eric in the house. Yes, I can hear and see you. Hey, Tony, David from Franklin, New Jersey, all is good. What's going on, David? Good evening today. And I know I kind of look a little cold. It's 28 degrees outside. Over here in uh, Texas, North Texas. Pretty cold. VIP from Montreal, Canada. Lots of time. Second time, Tim. What's going on, Tim? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Third time for me. I'm a VIP. Awesome. VIP in Edmonton, Alberta, where the snow falls and the sun shines. Your body effing freezes, but I'm all good. <laughs> Tremaine from North Carolina, second time, VIP. What's up, Trey? VIP, Anthony, Chicago, good evening. Looking good, Tony. Bill from North Bay, Canada. What's going on, Bill, Canada? A lot of you guys, so I'm over here complaining about the cold, but Canada is even colder, right? Well, right now, it's 32 degrees outside, and I have an, I have an insulated garage, but... My, uh, I don't have, I don't have anything on. You know what I mean? So if we can see 28 degrees, pretty crazy. Hawaii VIP fifth time. What's up, Kevin? Awesome. Kevin, you know, I'm from Hawaii, right? You know, you better know. <laughs> 20 today. Okay. Someone else from Sweden here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Guys. All right. So tonight's going to be a quick little show. Uh, I'm not going crazy. Obviously, my garage, it's probably 32 in my garage right now. Maybe a little bit warmer. Maybe it's its probably 10 degrees warmer. So it's probably like 38 in my garage right now. All right. Um, first timer, Springfield, Missouri. Things working on, things working okay, Tony. While you're in Texas, go down on the last cruise. Check out that clinic, Natural and Medical. Thank you so much. Um, what is that? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Sergio from Reno, VIP member. A lot of VIPs in the house. Thank you for getting on tonight. Okay, so quick show tonight. Um, awesome. Thank you, LeBron. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I just wanted to show you some simple Plasti Dip, okay? Simple stuff. Now, most of you guys probably already know, but I figured I'm going to be doing my BMW grills. So I might as well do them on video for you and just kind of tell you what I'm doing and um, just just do one side and show you kind of before and after. And I also cleaned up the chrome. So I just want to show you a couple things out in the shop. It's cold as hell out there. It's really not the time for painting. But, uh, you know, I figured, hey, why not? Let me just let me just do something. So I got a can of black plastic dip. All right. Nothing special. You're not late, buddy. You just you just got on at the right time. So it's more in my office here. It's about 65 in my office right now. I just got in and I turned the heat on quick. So I had this in here all day. So hopefully this is a little warmer. If you're going to be spraying, you want to make sure your, your paint or whatever you're doing is at least 65 degrees, at least, you know, maybe, I mean, if it's in the fifties, not really good. Okay. So here we go. We got some plastic dip. For those of you that don't know what plastic dip is, 
Uh, this is like the original shit that you used to dunk your tools in for the handles, you know? And I do have a gallon bucket of that. But let's go ahead and go to the shop quick. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to, you know, shake it up really good. Hello from Alaska. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> you guys are funny. You guys are some funny mofos in here. All right. So I'm in my garage. I kind of got a little bit set up right here. Okay. That's the grill we're going to be painting quick. Right over here. All right. It's cleaned up. Right. Waxed and greased, removed it. These are some of the chrome parts that I cleaned up. All right. And uh, let's get cranking in just a bit here. I got my hot coffee. Um, now, if we take a look at these two grills here. Now, give me some feedback, guys. I want to make sure uh, you guys can see clearly and you guys can see okay of what I'm doing here. All right. Uh, this side I cleaned. I polished up quickly earlier. This side I didn't do. So you can kind of see the gloss, the difference uh, in the gloss, hopefully. Right? Not, not really the gloss, but the shine. The shine. Okay? This one's a lot cleaner. So all I did, all I did was I like to use Brillo. Okay? I use triple O or, uh, oh, what is it called? Uh, quadruple. Quadruple, quintuple. I used to say quintuple a lot, but quadruple O. Okay? And all I do, I'll do a quick demo of this right here. Okay? People say, ah, it scratches. It doesn't scratch your chrome. Believe me. You could do classic car chrome with this. Everything. Okay? This is quadruple O Brillo. Steel wool. Okay, and it's so fine, it just takes off all the water spots and bad areas. Well, dirt and grime, so to say. Okay, so watch. Okay, you just do that lightly. It takes off all the grime. And it makes your grill look brand new again. Okay, watch. Hopefully you guys can see the difference. So we did right in here, okay? And here we didn't do it. You could see how grimy it looks on here. Okay, so that's what I like to do. It's hard to show it with this camera, okay? So steel wool works excellent. And I also did these little pieces, these little trim pieces for my beamer here. Okay, this goes into the M3, you know, the side grill for the uh, M edition. And I still haven't put it on fully yet, but this is what it looks like on. Okay, and this is, I still got to, I want to redo this black in here. I tried washing it out today, but it's still kind of, it has a wax all stuck in it. So this side's done. This side looks great, right? I polished the, all the chrome up with the steel wool, and once I put this in the car, it's gonna look awesome, okay? So this grill, I didn't do yet. If we look in the grill, you're gonna see that it's all crusty looking, ugly looking. All right, let's take this chrome off. All right, it looks like hell, right? The old owner waxed it, and they got like all wax stains in it, and it looks really old and grimy. So. I figured, let me just clean the whole thing up and I'll, I'll black it. I'll plasti dip the whole grill here and it's going to look good. Will you use WD-40 with Brillo? If you want to, you can. Does it work well with aluminum? No, it'll scratch your aluminum. Aluminum's a lot softer than chrome, a lot softer. So it will make shiny aluminum look hazy. All right, so let's go ahead and get, get painting before... My paint freezes. Okay. So very, 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 very quickly. Um, the only thing after using Brillo on any of your car parts is you want to make sure you rinse it down with water really good so you get the powder off. 
all right, the not the powder, but the the basic the filings. You know, the the light powdery metally fi metal filings from your steel wool. You want to get that off, right? Wash it off good. Uh, and it comes off. If you just hit it with a hose and you spray it, it comes right off, right? You just don't want to leave it there, have it wet and sit overnight. You'll get some surface rust on your paint. That you don't want to do, all right? So here's what I did. I got a little 3M scotch Bright pad, okay? And let me, move, let me move this over here like this. We'll set this up like this. What's up from Canada? Hello from Canada. Hello as well. All right? Um... I gotta move quick. Okay, so we're pretty much set up on our little chrome grill here. Okay, uh, maybe we'll go like this. All right, so it's all clean. It's cleaned up, I washed it. I got a little Brillo pad, not, not Brillo, scotch Bright, and I cleaned all in here, right? I wiped it down. I scuffed up the front because the front is actually chrome plated with some clear on it. All right, we're just going to go right over it and seal it up with Plasti Dip. And the cool thing about Plasti Dip is if you don't really like it, it'll come, it'll come right off. We don't need that. The cool thing about Plasti Dip is if you don't like it, it comes right off. So... I can't believe I got on at 6 in the morning to watch this. Dude, you are awesome, Christopher. Okay, so notice, ugly grill, right? Ugly looking old 2000 grill. It's a, it's a, it comes off of a 2000 BMW Z3 M, Z3 M edition. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to spray some Plasti Dip on this. Are you ready? Are you guys ready? You, gotta, you guys got to keep like typing the chat and say ready. I'm ready. Say I'm ready and I'll start. I'll start. Go ahead. Give me some thumbs up too. Ah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hope you guys can see this. So nothing spectacular, okay? We're going to give it some light coats. Light coats, nothing spectacular yet. And you got to remember, I don't know how this is going to come out because it's cold as shit. It's 28 degrees outside. It's probably 35 in my garage. I don't know how it's going to come out. Honestly, you should be doing this in a little bit warmer weather. Honestly, but you got to give this a couple heavy coats. You can't just keep loading it on. So that's why I'm waiting. Waiting like a flash time right now. All right, so let's see. And when it dries, it's going to start to dry like a matte color, which looks really nice. Heat the paint in a water bath. That's a good idea. I actually had it in my office all day at around 70 degrees. The dip will spray more evenly. Good idea. I have trouble getting Plasti Dip off. It peels in small clumps. And it is a pain to get off any easy way. Yeah, that's a pain in the ass. That's why you got to spray it on thick. Hold on. It's actually covering pretty well. Let's go back and hit it another coat. Let me know if you guys can see this. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and hit it again. Hold on. Hard to do it like this. Let me move you over a little bit more. Here we go. Okay. actually came out pretty good so let's let it level out okay bill from Ontario take your plastic dip off easy with pressure washer who hello from Houston all right so let's let it dry let's actually let it set up we'll go back in the office and um, we'll do some Q&A how's that so here's the difference this is the old one grimy and old ugly looking right i just wanted to get this point across to you you could flatten it out make it look really nice polish up your chrome put it back together wrong one anyway polish your chrome put it back together and it looks amazing once we put it on the front of the car it's going to look really really good you know what i mean so that's what i wanted to do uh you don't have to go sanding it down and base coat clearing it i think it'll actually look good you know, like a flat black. So here we go. I was actually thinking of painting this whole side piece um, black, but I figured, I don't know, let's just keep it red. So this, is, this piece is gonna be put back in here like this. You know, what do you think? Do you guys, give me some, give me some feedback. Do you think I should paint this piece black or keep it red? Any, any suggestions? Because I actually had this whole piece Plasti Dipped black before, and it looked different, but I just feel this way. It kind of blends into the car better. It just looks better. You know, it, bends, it, it, it blends a lot better. This inside piece, I just hit with some flat, you know, some flat black quickly just to make it look nicer. I think that's the best way. Yeah, keep it red. Everybody's saying keep it red. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep it red. Um, it, it looks a lot sharper that way, you know? It doesn't, look, it doesn't look stupid like my mirrors on my Miata. <laughs> but uh, some people say if you put a really dark black, it would look badass. Any other black accents? Um, the only other black was this piece over here. this back piece and I was actually thinking of tinting these back tail lights black and all you do how many of you guys want to see me do that right all you do is basically some people said black all you do is basically uh, mix a little bit of black base coat in your clear coat so once you do that you could tint your lens lenses or anything it doesn't have to be it could be red tint so you could make tint out of clear coat and putting a color base coat in there very little not a lot you know a couple of ounces to I would say if you're making a quart if you're making a quart of clear you'd want you'd probably want to put no more than no more than two ounces Blends well with the trunk panel. Yeah, I will. I will tint them. That's what I plan on doing. So uh, this side, you know, this side's not done. Um, but we just got to do that and put the grill in. Once the grill's in, this thing's going to look hot. The front's going to look really hot. So poor man's candy. Not really because it's easy to make. And if you're doing taillights and stuff, it's simple. Candy, I mean, I wouldn't do that for painting a custom paint job car. Like, I wouldn't do that painting a car. 
But for small accents like taillights, yeah, why not? You know, not a whole car. Hell no. But somebody wanted to see the gold rims here. So here's the gold rims. What I plan on doing on this car soon is uh, painting the top black. I was thinking of just changing it to black, just the gloss black, and then doing my mirrors black, changing it up a little bit. I don't know. What do you guys think? Give me some feedback on that. You guys like the, uh, the gold mirrors with the green look? Or would you say black the top and black the mirrors? That's what I'm kind of thinking. What are you guys saying over here? Black the top and black the mirrors? That's what I'm thinking of doing. I think that'll look nice. And then, and then basically black out the windows. Gold top, Tony. <laughs> That's what I originally thought to do was a gold top. You know, the same gold. But um, I, thought, I thought it would have been like way too much. Like, you know, it would have been like too much. So a lot of people are saying gold top. Well, maybe one person. Never did like the gold and green combo. You know, I'm really not a huge fan of the gold and green combo. The only reason why I did it was because gold does match with green, and I wanted to keep the original color. So this is a, it's a 1997 Miata M edition, and this is the original green. So I wanted to keep the original green, and I figured what would look good with it, and I know gold and green looks good, so that's why I did it. Gold top would look too ricey. <laughs> I like the gold. You like the gold. Okay. Anyway. Why not paint the handles? Because the handles are chrome. You know, I guess I could, but I still got to buff the door out. As you can see, I haven't, I haven't, touched, I haven't touched it. But uh, too much gold. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking of just turning this sucker black here. Maybe if I just do the mirrors black, it'll look good. Maybe that's what I'll do first. Just do the mirrors black, see how it looks, and then... Um, and then if I want to, I'll do the top black. Who the hell knows? Whatever. So talking about cars, what kind of cars you guys got? Type in some cars. Let's see what you guys got. What kind of cars you guys drive? Any special cars? Me, I had a, whole, I had a ton of cars. I, got, I sold a lot of my cars. <clears throat> so it looks like it's setting up. Looks like it's setting up. But it looks like it needs a lot of time to dry because it is, it's not very cold. It's not very hot or warm. Yeah, it's, it's still wet, it's still wet. You know what we're going to do? I might just rest this in my office. So we got 74 Eldorado, TSI Conquest, Cadillac STS. 79 Monte Carlo, that's a nice car. 91 Lincoln, 2004 Mustang, those are nice. Acura with K Swap. TSX, 2006 Monte Carlo, those are nice. Ford F 150, 2012 Audi S5, 4.2 V8, Flowmaster. Nice, nice, that's a nice car. Oh, that's a nice one. 98 Chevy S10. And 97 BMW 318i, 93 two door Tahoe, 99 Integra two doors, 90 Chevy Blazer. Wow, that's that's fucking classic right there. A Chevy Blazer. I haven't heard of one of those in a while. We got a uh, 2012 Camaro. We got a 92 Cadillac, 71 Impala convertible, black gold, black and gold. Tony, yeah. Black and gold is tight. I like black and gold. You can't go wrong with black and gold. Uh, going to do some Mercedes inspired ambient lightning interior dash panel, some other mod, 2001 Pontiac Aztec. Dude, that car is a classic. That's a collector car. I don't know if you knew it, by the way. That ugly car, that Pontiac Aztec, and it is ugly, I think. A lot of people do think it's ugly. But that car, Ralph, that's a collector. 
keep that sucker. Restoring 68 GTO convertible and have F250 99 Super Duty. 92 Impala, 73 Volvo. I don't even know what that car looks like, Chris. 73 Volvo. Uh, just finished the Grand Cherokee. Plastic dipped every piece of chrome grill. 29 emblems in graphite. Then put a touch of blue pearl in the clear coat. Lots of compliments. What color is, Greg, what color is your base coat? Oh, so it's graphite. It's a graphite color with blue pearl. So it's like a gunmetal with blue pearl. Hit me up on that. I, I kind of like that. Uh, 98 GMC Sierra. 36 Chevy 5 window coupe. That's nice. 2008 Range Rover. Okay. I actually like that body style better than the new ones. I like the 2005, 2008, you know, from 2005 to 2010. Um, it is ugly, but a rare to see. <laughs> I sent you a pitch. AC Cobra with old Jag back. That, that would be interesting. How would you strip a whole car, Tony? Um, it depends. I mean, you only got a couple ways. You got media blasting, which is basically you hook your, ho your hose up to this, this thing and you just, it blows out and you, and with pellets and you media blast it. Um, you could use a paint stripper with chemical. You brush it on, it peels all the paint, take it off. You could sand it all off or they got the new water pressure blasting. They come around. I forgot what the hell, what the hell, what company did it? I had the company a couple weeks ago. I was talking about them. Um, There's basically a company. You can hire them. They'll come and they'll just pressure wash your car and take all the paint off. There's a name for it. Anybody in here know, know what I'm talking about? You pay them a couple hundred, but that's like stripping to the bare bone. I don't know if that's what's something you want to do because it's not necessary in a, in a lot of, you know, paint jobs. You really don't have to strip down to bare metal unless you want to and you're doing something very special and sentimental or it has too much crappy paint on it. Um, then you could do that. But those are your, your four, you know, your four methods really. What you got in that cup? I got some coffee. All right, guys. So I don't know how the hell this thing's going to come out. I sprayed it. It's freaking cold. It's really not painting weather, right? I sprayed it. It's going to take a while to set up. Um, I'm not sure if I'm happy the way it looks. It looks like it's bubbling on the front. Not really, not really bubbling, but what would you call this? It looks like it's starting to dry a little bit. Take a look. It looks like it really needs to dry. It's still, it's still, uh, still wet. It might flatten out. It might flatten out after it dries. If it doesn't, I'll just sand the front a little bit better. And I'll plastic dip it again. But for sure, I want to end up with a plastic dip on this sucker. It'll look good. It'll look good plastic dipped. For sure. That I know for sure. I mean, that's something I do want to do. So, um, I mean, if, if we it – like it is setting up a little bit. Here, if we grab this – I really don't want to F shit up right now, but – You know, all put together, all put together, it's going to look really good. Yeah, I'm going to set this in my office. That's what I'm going to do. So that's what I'm going to do right now. We're going back to the office. I'm going to put it on the floor, let it dry. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. Anyway, that was a quick, quick demo. Nothing crazy. Obviously, it's freaking cold, right? And I don't like working in the cold. That's why uh, 
That's why I chill when, when it starts getting cold. Okay, yeah, let's do some Q&A, guys. Let's do about 10 minutes of Q&A, and then, uh, we, you know, we'll call it a night. I know a lot of you guys on here, you guys got other things to do. Thanks for jumping on. Appreciate it. Um, somebody said, can you talk about your single post, your single uh, post lift? So here it is. I picked this sucker up last year. Uh, I paid about 30 how much did I pay? 3500 It was like 2900 and 600 shipping. It's a badass lift. It's super strong. 6,000 pounds. Um, chain with a hydraulic. Single hydraulic in here. Heavy duty chain. Okay. Um, I put it together myself. It came in a huge box. Um, you know, it has all the adjustments, as you can see, right? All the adjustments. And you just sit your car where you want it, and then you roll it right underneath your car. You set your mounts, your mounting points, and then you just push the button, and it lifts it up. Super cool. You know, you put your hydraulic oil in this canister here. Um, and then you push the button here. Let's show you. Probably making you guys dizzy. But you push the button. And it and it lifts right up and it locks too. So you know you push this the release and it locks in place. Super, super cool lift. I'm really happy with it because when you're done with it, you could roll it out of the way and store it. You know, LeBron, you got this same lift. Did you get the mobile men? I, it might have been 26 for me, but I know it was like 31 or 35 total with shipping. 26, 27, 8, 9, 30, 31, 32. Some shit like that. You know, I paid around three grand here. Uh, so let's see. What causes fisheye? Contamination. Um, it could be bad paint. And most of the time, it's con contamination on the panel or in the air. So if you're like in an area um, where you have a mechanic near you or you're spraying WD-40, you know, that kind of shit, that's very bad. Water in the airline. Not really. You're not going to get fisheye all over your paint evenly if, if it was water in your line. And always, you know, you want to you want to weed that out. You want to you want to take that out of the equation by draining your tank and having a water filter, you know, 10, 15 feet away from your tank and at your gun, right? Underneath you want to have a water filter. So if you're weeding that out. If you're eliminating the water, then the only thing it could be is contamination. So, um, you know, the only thing to do is clean it out. They have an a agent called Fisheye Eliminator, and you could do a couple of squirts in there and eliminate your fisheye if you're getting it all the time. But I don't like to, to eliminate it. It's like a Band-Aid to me. It's like, you know, why are you getting fisheye? But my dad used to use it as a pre preventative additive. Like you just, especially with single stage enamel, sometimes you just get fisheye. You know, I don't know why. It's really weird. But he'd have this little fisheye eliminator and he'd do like a, a two squeezes of, of from a bottle and mix up your paint and it's supposed to help help your paint flow out. Thank you, Chris, for sending me your Volvo. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, today, UPS delivered one of your paint guns. I ordered it one before, one before. My question is, I need some paint. I need to paint some furniture with latex. Is the 1.8 tip good for this application? Yeah, you could do that. Test it out. It should be good 1.4, 1.8. You might have to reduce it a little. But try spraying it with the 1.4, see how that works for you. And then if it seems too thick, then go with the 1.8. I've never sprayed uh, latex out of a gun like that, 
but I have sprayed Plasti Dip, and I did use a, a bigger tip. Uh, Eric says, how long, okay, let me back up a little bit. Stephanie, how long does it take to color sand and buff a card normally? Normally, you know, it depends on what kind of job you're doing. If you're doing a complete whole car, it could take you a day or two just to sand it down completely to get it really nice and blocked out and sand it out. It could be, it could be two days. You know, it depends how many hours you're putting in per day. You know, it could be, it could be 15 to 25 hours of block sanding, depending. And buffing, usually about the same amount of time, maybe a little bit less. But if you're doing, you know, two stage buffing, you're doing your, you know, your compound, then you're doing your glaze, then you're doing your hand wax. It could take, it could take three, four days to do a really good color sand and buff job. Probably faster. If you work faster, you could probably get it done in two, three days. But if you're taking in time and you want to do it right, it could take, it could take up to four days to do a very, very good color sanding and buffing job, like show style. <clears throat> uh, what do you, what kind of spray guns do you recommend? Whatever fits your budget. You know, I like to use the Warwick line. I sell them at the store. Um, what's his name? BTS off key. Just, just actually bought those. So if you guys want to check that out, check out the spray guns here at the shop. Awesome spray guns, by the way, and that's all I use here at the headquarters. They are um, affordable, high quality made. What do you think about the quality of those spray of that spray gun? You got the 904. What do you think about the? How does it look? It looks like a nice gun, doesn't it? Happy New Year, Tony from Grant. Sorry to change the subject, but I'm trying to paint my VW camper with the blue metallic. Blue metallic pearl base coat, 2K. Could I flat the out before clear to get glass finish? Cheers. I don't understand your question, Darren. Blue metallic pearl base coat, okay. Could I flat? Uh, no, you don't want to sand... I'm thinking what you're saying is, do you sand the base coat flat before you put clear coat? No. No, 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 no. You don't want to do that. All right? Your base coat, spray it. It should lay flat, and then you clear on top of it. That's it. If your base coat looks a little orange peel a little bit, that's okay because you're going to flow it out with the clear coat, and 80% of the time it flows it out if you lay on your clear coat thick enough. You won't see it. Okay, and then you could color sand and buff that to get the glass finish. But you never wanna you never wanna sand the base coat before putting your clear coat. You just wanna shoot your base, two, three coats, you know, flash time it, um, tack it down between each each coat and two, three coats of heavy clear. I don't know if I don't a lot of you guys probably seen um, my new video that I just put out. This video, this series is going to be going into VIP very, very soon. So later on, you guys can check this check this video out. There you go. Click that link, that YouTube link, guys, and just save it. Um, that's me doing the BMW. I show you the step-by-step -step process, and I have a lot of text on there and voiceover, so you could learn a lot from that 22-minute clip. Watch that video. Business Technology Systems of Kentucky. Thank you so much. <laughs> do you have a name? <laughs> All right. I'm going to go back and, and do some more Q&A quickly. Uh, uh, how, long, how long should you let clear coat cure before cut and buff? Tim Moore, it depends on your clear coat. Okay. Sometimes they have, uh, not sometimes, they have speed dry clear coats where you can cut and buff in an hour. It depends on your clear. Some most clears the next day you can cut and buff. But I like to wait at least a week or two to let the paint really cure up. Okay? And then I sand it, cut it and buff it. Right? Cut and buff it. Um and there's no time frame. You could spray a car and cut it and buff it a year later. 
Okay, there's really no time frame. You're going to get the same gloss. Um, haven't opened the box yet. Okay, can you post? Can you post me the make of your lift? It is a Mobileman, and their service isn't really that great, but the product is okay. Uh, what is the shelf life on paint and clear coat? As long as you keep it closed, Danny. I would say easy 10 years for base coat, clear coat, maybe five years, as long as it's as long as it's sealed and you don't have no moisture going inside of it, you know, or extreme temperatures. Um, Jason Miller, I ordered the 904 as well. Awesome. I can't, you know, let me know. Keep me posted, guys, when you get your guns and when you test them out. When it starts to get warmer out uh, within the next couple of months, so it's January, March, April. April, May, I plan to do the little uh, high jet project, the little uh, Japanese mini truck that I got. And I'm going to be doing a lot of, did you guys, did anybody in here fill out the Pearl survey that, that I sent out? Any VIPs in here? We're going to do some crazy Pearls on that car, maybe even a chameleon. And we're, I'm going to document all the process for you VIPs as well. Um. Anybody take that Pearl survey? I sent out a Pearl survey. Thank you so much for filling that out. Um, I'm trying to find out, you know, what the best Pearls, you know, what, what Pearls I should get for you guys. Um, and this is top-notch shit. This is, this is very, very high-quality Pearls that I'm getting for you guys. Uh, from a company I hooked up at SEMA. And um, you're going to like it. I'm going to start doing a lot of Pearl demonstrations when it starts to get warmer. Would you guys like that? Would you guys like some videos on Pearl demonstrations? And, you know, we could do like a panel of black, white, silver, and spray like a blue Pearl over everything. And you guys can see what blue Pearl looks over black, you know, white, silver, or all that kind of stuff. Hey, Tony, how did you send it? I just got in late. Um... I don't know what you mean, Hank. Uh, I sent it by email. It's a survey that I that I created for you guys. Guys, let me actually send you the link right now. How would you like that? And you could actually take the survey after we after we close up the call today. You might like that. Hold on, let me log into my account here, and I will pull up the survey, and you guys can click that link and basically do the survey. It's, a, it's only six questions. I got it right now. And it's going to be super cool. Okay, how do you get dust from getting in your paint? Well, you want to make sure. Try that link, guys. You want to make sure you tack, you tack off. You're in an environment that is, you know, kind of boxed off like a garage. doesn't have to be a spray booth. Okay, I mean, I, I've had guys spray outside and have the most amazing spray jobs. Okay. Um, so Stephanie, ba basically you want to tack your paint job down, make sure you tack it down and you spray it. If you get a little bit of dust in it, no big deal because you can color sand and buff it out. Yeah. No problem, Hank. Yeah, guys, hyper shift pearls. We're going to be, I am going to stock all of that. We're going to have hyper shift pearls. We're going to have chameleon pearls. Uh, we're going to get. You know, glow in the dark pearls, fluorescent, all of that. But we're going to start with the most popular. So I want to stock the most popular um, before, you know, getting too big. I don't want to, I don't want to stock too much shit. Uh, do you work in an auto body shop or do you do it at home? Leo, I used to run my own auto body shop when I was 18 to 24. I grew up around body work. My dad was a professional body and paint man for 15 years. So I painted my first car when I was 15 years old. I'm 34 now. So I've been in the auto body game a long time. I painted my first uh, moped, 50cc moped when I was 13, base coat, clear coat, way back then, 20 years ago. So, um, so that's my story. So now I like to teach auto body you know, and I just do my own custom jobs in my home garage here and I teach it. So that's, that's what I do. 
Um, I have a friend who's a professional body man. He works and paints full cars in a 100-year-old warehouse. That is awesome. What's the reason you use Plasti Dip versus regular paint? Well, Plasti Dip gives it a nice flat matte look, a flat look, you know, that looks really nice. And the cool thing about that is if you don't like it, you could basically peel it right off. So it's it's different. You know, some people like to Plasti Dip their whole cars. I'm not really into the whole matte look on a car. You know, maybe a Jeep or something would look good, but I like to have glossy, shiny cars. You know, that's just me. Some people like the matte look, you know. Um, but it's totally different shit than, you know, performance automotive clear coats. You know, uh, what kind of clear do you use? Right now, Stephanie, I like House of Color. I use a lot of House of Color clear coats. Um, but I did hook up with a lot of people at SEMA last year, November. And they're going to actually... They're supposed to be sending me clear coats. I got I to gotta call these people back up to test different clear coats. And if I like them, we're going to st start stocking clear coats for you guys as well. And I want to try to get the best prices. I am not going to sell at the store what I don't like and what I don't use personally. So the spray guns we have at the shop, you know, I sell those because that's the guns that I use. They're affordable. They are high quality, and you get a very, very good bang for your buck, like unbelievable bang for your buck. So that's why um, I promote those. Have you tried Pro Max Clear Coat? No. <clears throat> uh, how can I become a VIP student? Well, if you want to check out VIP, I'll give you a link here, and you could learn more about VIP. You know, some people don't like this video. They say it's like an infomercial. Maybe I have to change it, but that's VIP. So click that link. It should take you to a VIP. Uh, it tells you all about it, everything that you get as a VIP member. All right? Hopefully that, uh, that helps you out there. Um, how do you stop runs and paint? Well, stopping runs and paint, you don't stop runs and paint. You don't make runs and paint, right? So when you're painting, you got, when you're painting, when you're spraying, you got to make sure you're going at the, the, the right speed, okay? The right speed, uh, the right distance from panel, which is four to six inches, okay? And the right pressure, and you got to keep going. And you got to take, like, maybe parts of the mirror. Like, you know, if you have a mirror on a door, you might want to take that out so you don't have to go down and up and around and, and you know, pause for a second while your, your trigger is pulled and you're, you're causing a run, right? Oh, God. Okay, the big debate on social media right now is primers. Where did you get that big debate? I haven't heard anything about it, Sean. <laughs> I have the 980H that I shoot nothing but clear. What is a good primer gun? Um, I mean, you can get a 904 with a 2.2 tip. That could be your, your, your primer gun. Get the 904, the cheaper version, and get a big tip size, the 2.2. This way you can spray your... Uh, sealers out or get the kit with a 1.8 or a 2.0 and a 2.2 you know whatever you want you know they'll all work um, but I think if you're spraying if you're spraying thicker primers uh, like filler primers and sealers you want to use at least a 1.8 ideally 1.2 to 2 no ideally 2.0 to 2.2 tip on the 904 I think would be a perfect uh, primer gun and I mean that's the setup that I use Got any cheap paint booth ideas? I'm kicking the idea around of PVC frame plastic sheeting. That sounds good to me. You could also pick up one of those cheap tents, you know, and just cover it up, you know, cover one side. A lot of them, three sides are, are built for you. You know, you got three sides. You just got to create one side and uh, hook up a ventilation fan, a box fan. That's all you really need. Uh, I have a gun that isn't spraying correctly. Do the rebuild kits work well, and are they hard to install? It's a devil bis. Uh, they should be fine. Get a rebuild kit. Clean it out. You want to make sure you clean it out really good. How about masking in wheel wells? What's your protocol? Mask it up. I mean, make sure it's clean, right? Take all the dirt off. This way your paint sticks and mask it up. Not really a big deal. Uh, Mr. Show, great course, guys. I've done lots of jobs since I got it. I have different Makos calling every other day now. 
Uh, let's see. Please answer my question, Tony. I really need to know. Eric, what's your question? Type it in one more time, please. Copy and paste, buddy. Okay, thanks. I have a cheap 2.0 that I shoot G2 with now. Awesome. Guys, if you're liking the show so far, give me a thumbs up. You guys put me in a good mood tonight. I was in a bad mood, actually, before I got on. Just had a just had a tough day. You know, you get one of those tough days, right? I get them, too. You know, it's not always sunshine and rainbows over here. <laughs> it's not easy, especially with a disabled child. Um, what do you wear when you when I paint? I wear jock straps, a tank top, and I rub baby oil all over my body. <laughs> oh God, a lot of baby oil, especially around this area. <laughs> oh God, I'm just I'm just screwing around, guys. Sometimes you gotta have fun. After a car is stripped, uh, <laughs> guys, if you're not a VIP, join VIP. It's super affordable, and everything is documented, especially, especially if you're just starting out. Um, okay, how long does it take to prove? Oh, gee, it should take. You know, it's probably because your name is not i will make sure uh support gets that did you ever contact support did you set up send a ticket because they need to check that you're a vip to get you in the facebook group it usually takes a day or two because because my support girls manually do it so if you're a vip they want to make sure you're paid and then you get entered into the private facebook group um now we're getting somewhere. Do you have a picture? VIP. What sandpaper grit to take off spray paint? Previous owner painted it horrible, but when I sand it, I don't want to mess up paint underneath, hoping to sand and buff it. Oh, I would water sand it with 2,000 grit. 2,000 grit, water sand, circular motion, and take it out and then buff it. You could even, if it's giving you a problem, maybe even 1,500 grit. To, to get it off, but you don't want to go coarser than that. Okay. You could even get some light lacquer thinner and just wash it off with lacquer thinner and then scuff it with 2000 grit wet sand in a circular motion nicely and then buff it out. You'll be, you'll be doing very good. You'll be top notch, buddy. I have been looking for someone to teach me for 35 years. My dad, who was in the business as a kid, would not teach or help me. Awesome. I'm glad you're here. Does it matter the viscosity of the baby oil? What if it drips into your paint while painting? <laughs> then, then you're going to need a lot of fish eye eliminator. So you're going to want to have to buy at least two of those and have those on your side pouch. So if you see any fish eyes, you could just squirt it in the gun, mix it, and shoot it. It's under Nikki Nako. Okay. OG Lock, did you actually send in a support ticket to get approved in Facebook? Because that's the protocol. You're supposed to you're supposed to tell open a support ticket and tell them to approve you and tell them that name and then they'll do it. Awesome guys. Um Okay, guys. I'm going to head out. We've been on for like an hour, close to an hour. So thank you so much for joining, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, really. I do this for you guys, um, and I like talking with you guys. You guys are awesome. Seriously, you guys are freaking awesome coming on here, uh, you know, 9 o'clock at night central and, um, and getting on. Thank you, Don. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, next week, we are going to be <laughs> – Hank Scott, thank you. Next week we're gonna be on. We're gonna be talking about something else on Thursday, um, and uh, I will see you on next week. All right, guys. If you haven't yet, hit the thumbs up. Share it with other friends and family who you think might get some benefit and value out of, you know, auto body Q and A.
you know, auto body Q&A. And once it starts getting warmer, we're going to be doing a lot more, right? I kind of slowed down the gears a little bit during the winter time uh, because it's freaking cold. You know, I'm from Hawaii. I'm not used to this cold shit. I like, I'm, I like Hawaiian air. So I may go back soon. <laughs> Soon after I make enough money to buy my million dollar house. <laughs> oh, Kyle, just logged into my kid's computer. Extra likes. Thanks, Tony. I'm dying. Okay, guys, check out VIP if you're non VIP. And um, you can also get the free 85 page auto body manual here if you're looking to do that as well. Get the free auto body manual. I'm in Texas. North DFW right now, 28 degrees outside. Um, awesome, guys. Have a great night. I'll see you on next week. Peace.